Ko te kai kōrero e whai ake nei Nō te mautiri o te wari kauri Te aromai Te eke mai ki ronga i te wanganui ātara i tēnei rā Deborah Gooms is a Chatham Island of Moriori e Ngāti Mutunga descent and also as whakapapa from Ngai Ta'u, Ngāti Toa Rangatira Te Ati Awa e Ngāti Raukawa. She has a background in Māori Resource and Environmental Management, Indigenous Studies and Tō Unga Tanga Moriori. Deborah is Pau Āpai for the Okote e Moriori Trust and part of the research team for the Indigenising the Blue Economy Project of the Challenge, here to share the stories of Moriori fishing, please welcome Deborah Gooms. Well, Tina uh, Koto, Ka Uri o Rungumai Fenua, called Deborah uh, Ingwa. Um, it's an absolute pleasure um, to be here today, and um, I'm part of the, uh, the research team for Project 2.3, and uh, I started this project in January, so I'm a real new kid to the block, but um, having known that you guys have been on this co pup for eight and a half years, um, um, I'm glad that uh, you ones connected with uh, Rikohu, Warakauri in the Chatham Islands, so that we can be part of that kōrero in order to um, be part of the, the bigger kaupapa and uh, work towards um, um, the future of our mokopu. So my research is named Hokopapa o Rungo, Rungo Mona, and it's about a journey of the beginning of Moriori fishing. So it uh, captures our traditional knowledge, um, our silent knowledge when we went through a time of colonisation um, and for many years um, we were, how would I put it, um, silence through consequences of history into a restorative uh, knowledge. Um, we're pretty much at the, for Moriori, we're pretty much at the beginning of our revival journey. And, and collating our knowledge and of our karapuna, our tūpuna, and making sense of it today and how we apply it. So my research is basically about the voices of Rikohu, and I'm here today to share with you those voices, to put those voices to names, to pictures, and to um, give life and essence to those voices. Oh, okay, wrong button. Oh, here we are. So essentially, while well, we call it research, it's our story. So when I was approached to do be part of this co-papa, this, this, this project team, um, I thought to myself, well, okay, differentiation, integration, and balance. That's not going to fit well with the everyday Chatham Island yarn at all. You know, foreign language. So what I did is, um, with the support of my colleague, Professor Anne-Marie um, Gillies, who basically enabled me to write this research, this, this story, the way it needed to, to be written, through Moriori language, the way Chatham Islanders understand it, from layman's, from grassroots, how we understand it, but more importantly, as a contribution to the wider kōrero, hence why we're all here, but also that um, to develop that body of knowledge around our fishing and our moana, so that at the end of it all, this fulfils this part of this kōrero and this kaupapa, but more importantly, to develop that knowledge even further for our generations to come. So that's how, um, essentially, this project um, came about. This is Raiha. Raiha is, I'm actually a fifth generation fisher myself. Raiha is a sixth generation fisher. 
who has a fishing huno, Fano, and she talks about um, our kai moana is life. Without it, we wouldn't be able to work, feed our kids, feed our wairua, our livelihood. And this brings in the importance of our generational fishes in terms of hokapapa and that continuation. Draiha has a young family. She has uh, three children, and they all have grown up on the island, being connected to their, their, their hukupapa, their connection to their, their moana, their kai moana. What is interesting I found here is she mentions the word wairua. So through, through her world of her business and her livelihood, there is no differentiation between that and the cultural feeding of her, her family, and the wider Chatham Island community. Intergenerational business planning. So this is Dana with her partner with a broken arm. She's on the boat fishing because that's what you do as a Chatham Island kid. You grow up on the boat, you go and help. You know, it's a bit like that titao tanga we were talking about. For fishing, it's like, oh, you know, get the bait, hun. You know, clean out those pot, you know, the, the, all those smelly thing jobs. But, you know, you look at that smile on her face. But for Raiha and her children and her business and the generations to come, it's about to provide our children with a business grow into that business, be business owners. You know, we don't want to be deckhands all our lives. We want to own our boats. We want to have control over our business. We want to grow. Keep running the business so our mukapu, our muku, can run the business after. Dana is a, is a um, sixth raiha. So she's a seventh generation. Fisher. This is Silvio. When Silvio was a little lad, I remember going down to the rocks in a low tide, and he's about this high. He's running to the rocks, he finds a, a rock pool, he get, jumps in there, you know, the water's only about this much. Pulls out a kinna, smashes it on the rocks, sit down, have a feed. You know, just instinctively, oh, at the peak, I might go and get a feed. And that's what we want for our generations. And we are lucky. We are lucky on Rikohu on Wairakaudi um, that our tamariki have access to that, that they are born into that connection from the get-go, into that hokopapa. Silvio didn't like going to high school much because he had to go off island. So when he was 15, uh, nearly sits and decides, oh, I'm not going back to New Zealand, no way. He went fishing. Silvio is our seventh generation fisher from that family. On the island, we don't have access to those skills. If your boat breaks down, you pretty much got to fly in a, a diesel engineer, fly in the parts. They may come whenever. So you have to be resilient and you have to learn from the get-go. Silvio, this is Raiha talking about Silvio, our 17-year-old son is a natural mechanic. Our nephew can do absolutely everything. If they are learning like this on the job, imagine what they can achieve through access to qualified skills. They both have the basic fishing, qualifications, but they need to access those specialised areas of knowledge. His dad learnt the same way since he was 15. Now he's 41, teaching the kids. So our knowledge is made up of a lot of things. Yes, we've got to get the qualifications. Yes, we've got to do that and, and, and all sorts of things. But this is how our, our, our children grow up learning. Chatham Island Valleys. 
Well, we all have our insecurities about tourism and, and recreational um, uh, take. Raiha talks about, don't think any islanders like the recreational take when it comes to tourists and others coming to the islands. It's not just, just our visitors, it's all visitors. They're not breaking any laws, but we have our own island values. Chatham Islanders are brought up to take only what they need and maybe feed out our other family, give to our rangata mātua, our kaumātua. So something about taking more than you need is just not fathomable, you know, just, mm, OK. Recreation catch limit, uh, limits, and I picked up on tarmac Mark yesterday about kaukura and how they reduce them. Well, we had em em embarked on that journey some years ago and it's just got to sort of like the minister to get signed off. And that's a clear example about Chatham Island values. You know, everybody loves to assert them their tiekitanga or their kaitiakitanga or their manakitanga or their manawareka for us, the warming of the heart. You know, we want to brag about our kaimoana. You know, we want to share it with everybody. But we also want you to recognise our values. Now, this wasn't just a Moriori initiative. This is an example of a collective approach to our sustainability of our, um, of our industry and, and of our customary fisheries. It's about all of us getting together on the same kaupapa. From the chair, this is Tom Lenores. He's our chair of Hokitihi Moriori Trust. Island born, he's, uh, I think he's 75, lived there all his life. An amazing body of knowledge. This is him on the average day going about his business. And he talks about aquaculture. You know there is aquaculture in the wind at the moment. We've got a, a bit of a project uh, at the onset of research uh, from an individual Chatham Islander. And I think with that aquaculture, it will take the pressure off commercial. OK, so a couple of years ago, again, um, as an, a response to, to looking at uh, two signs of the environment with our power, not being as abundant as it should be, but not depleted, not as abundant. So what they did is quota owners um, in power, we come under power four, um, got together, those offshore quota owners plus the locals uh, in conjunction with the ministry and decided to shell our power, a percentage of our power for five years to help that recovery. Now we didn't, we couldn't wait for legislation to come along and say, "Hey, you know, put the, put the, put the, the, the systems around it." What we did is we got local agreements. You can't wait for the golden egg to happen, while you, you you know from a local level that your fish isn't, the balance isn't quite right. So again, Māori, uh, Ngāti Mutunga local fisheries, MPR, fishermen, um, offshore quota owners all embarked on that agreement. They didn't have to do that, because that's taken away from, you know, for the fishers, their individual livelihood, a percentage. But for the greater good of our, our, our mokapu, it was um, essential. Rana Solomon, she is the great granddaughter of Tommy Solomon. Uh, known to be uh, the last of the full-blooded um, Moriori. She was a, uh, a mahine of, uh, back in the days of diver, back in the days before the quota management system. She, um, after that, she has worked in emergency management around the climate change uh, space. She is a newly appointed uh, a trustee of Hokitihi Moriori Trust. And she has this to say about innovation and adaption. Research and development is at the beginning of everything we plan to do, from an organisation point of view. 
The science can tell us about the here and now. The cultural knowledge has told us what the journeys have been in the past now, uh, in the, have been in the past to now. Our job is to combine the two so we can use a com combination of knowledge to guide a sustainable fishery. She talks about climate change. The environment is constantly changing, hot, cold, medium, rare. It is changing through global warming. It affects everything living in our environment, so we need to change with it. So we know what's going on. You know, we had the same issues as mainland Aotearoa tribes um, around our fisheries. It has how uh, we work together on that kaupapa for our mokupu. Now, when I came on board the blue economy, I thought, well, what does that look like for us? And it looks exactly like that. This is what the blue economy looks like for our mokupu. This is how our Chatham Island kids grow up, connected. This little mokupu in the morning, uh, in, in the middle, the little one, she is our eighth generation of fisher in that same family. Um, I've had an absolutely wonderful time here sharing, our, um, um, sharing in your corridor. Um, I relate to lots of things. Um, I certainly have been fed um, culturally and spiritually throughout this, and, uh, and I really welcome um, uh, what lies ahead. Finally, I would just like you to introduce this mokupu over here. Her nickname is Pretty Girl. She's got the most beautiful green eyes like Tangaroa, the eyes of Tangaroa, and she's got the wairua of a true Chatham Island mokupu. I have this TikTok video for you all to enjoy. Mirung. She's world famous on the Chatham Island as the Kinna Queen. Thank you. Kinna on toast, by the way. Yummy. Renowned power eating skills. Anyway, thank you so much.